Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege, and I decided to build on the car I made in the last episode and make a piston-powered engine for it. So let's get right into it. So now I'm loaded into the sandbox, and I'm loading up my car from last episode. And it was driving around pretty well, but I want some sort of piston mechanism to drive that differential. So I'm starting out with a timing mechanism, because I want some way to be able to control the engine without touching keys on my keyboard. So I'm using a piston here, and it's going to be a trigger for a sensor, and I'm putting in that sensor block now. So when the sensor block sees that the piston is not extended, it'll turn on. But when the piston's extended, it'll stop detecting it and turn off. So here I accidentally put the sensor facing into the ground, so I had to fix that real quick. And now if I lower the distance and radius, I can achieve the effect I want, where when the piston's extended, it won't detect it, but when it's not extended, it will detect it. And it's going to emulate when I'm pressing the A key on my keyboard. And I have a gear here that turns on when the A key is pressed. So with that in place, now when the piston's not extended, the sensor is on and the gear spins. But when the piston's extended, the sensor doesn't detect it anymore and the gear turns off. Now, of course, this isn't exactly what I'm going to be having in the final mechanism. I won't be driving a gear. But the idea that I can somehow time this mechanism using the position of the pistons is something I can use. And now I'm going to start working on the crankshaft. So that's why I just built up here with a couple swivel joints. And it's not doing much at the moment, but it has no power source or anything. So now I'm adding in some bumps, and these bumps are what the pistons are going to be attaching to. And this has room for two pistons so far, and it's just swinging at the moment. And if I add in a piston at the bottom, now when I extend the piston, you can see I sort of start to get movement out of the crankshaft. But the piston isn't attached to the crankshaft at all, which is a slight problem. And also, it's not rotating up far enough. I need it to rotate double the distance it is right now. So I added in a second piston by stacking them, and it seems to work pretty well when they extend it goes up two blocks now and this is what I wanted to use. Now I didn't quite give myself enough room so I had to raise up the crankshaft a little bit and now I'm building in actually room for four pistons and in my final design I wanted to have ideally a four piston engine. I miss around a little bit with eight but four is what I end up going with. So now I have that put in place and it's not rotating a lot which is actually good that means it's balanced right now. So it shouldn't wobble a lot, shouldn't vibrate so much. And it's time to put in the pistons again, but this time I'm putting a hinge underneath them. And this is so as the pistons have to swing back and forth as they rotate with the crankshaft, they have a way to do that without just snapping. So I put that in place, and now I need some way to attach those two pistons to the crankshaft. And this was harder than I thought it was going to be. So the first thing I decided to use was a ball joint, and this allows it to rotate wherever. You see how the ball joint can just fall over. But right now it's not even attached to the crankshaft, it just sort of falls down. And I was struggling for a little bit how to attach it. I ended up inverting the ball joint and then making a straight crankshaft like this. And this is the first time I actually got some sort of rotation out of the crankshaft. Now, this was okay, but it had the small problem of kind of clipping right into itself. And for me to have something this dumb happen this early, I decided to look for a better solution. And I ended up finding that with two swivel joints facing into each other. And of course, I made it a block too high, so I have to lower it again. At the time, I didn't know about the move tool for some reason, so I just rebuilt everything. And now if I attach the pistons to those swivel joints, as the pistons extend and contract, they can rotate the crankshaft, and there's absolutely no clipping right now. And this was actually pretty promising, to the point where I wanted to get the rest of the pistons in place. So the next thing to do is add in the second piston, which is going to be 90 degrees offset from the first. So I have to start the hinge being slightly rotated, and one of the pistons I want to start extended. And now as I attach it to the swivel joints, it sort of works, it's not connected too well, but I start to get that rotation that I'm looking for. So with that sort of working, I wanted to add in the other two pistons. So it's actually not that hard to do, it's basically just copying and pasting, but I have to like rotate them 90 degrees in their rotation. So here I have the same thing, it's the same as the first one except it's fully extended and now it's going to contract, whereas the first one is fully contracted and it's going to have to expand. So I add in those three pistons, and also I need to brace the crankshaft together. Now I need to do this because in a real crankshaft, the swivel joints themselves would be able to hold the thing together in a bit of a different way than they actually behave in the game. I don't want to get too into it, but basically to do that I need to have a bunch of bracing pieces, and this ends up solving my problem with holding the crankshaft together. So now with those three in place, it didn't seem to rotate, but I wasn't really too worried about it, because I wanted to add in the last piston anyway and see if that would solve the problem. So to do that, I'm basically just copying the second piston and then just rotating it around, and then putting it in place there using two swivel joints as I did before, and then I have to attach it with braces. So after doing that, I just had to change this backside a little bit to get the swivel joint in so the crankshaft can rotate on something. And after putting that in and trying to run it, nothing was happening. And the problem was this third piston setup. It was actually attached to the crankshaft itself and wasn't going to let it rotate. So to fix that, I had to move it over half a unit so it's in between the two blocks. And after bracing it like this, I wanted to give it a try, and the initial movement seemed promising, so I ended up hitting the right key combinations on my keyboard to keep it rotating, and it seemed to work. 
Now this rotation is very jittery, and it's because I'm kind of approximating when to hit it. It's not any hard timings, it's just whenever I think it's right. So the next thing to add in is some sort of sensor setup to get this automatically rotating itself. So I'm using this sort of windmill fan thing at the end, and this is what the sensors are actually going to detect. And there it was actually rubbing against the frame a bit, so I just have to extend the frame out. And after doing that and trying to rotate it, it seems to work pretty well and it rotates that around. And that was pretty good, so I wanted to add in triple length lugs, and unfortunately this caused the axle to break. So I decided to brace it and see if that would solve the problem, but I guess I was adding a lot of weight to the axle and this caused it to just snap. So I reinforced the axle with a second wooden bar underneath, and this fixed all of my weight carrying problems. So with that out of the way, it's time to add in the sensor setups. And I'm adding in the tower here and then the sensor. And now I want the sensor to detect whenever the wood bar is in front of it. And now if I tell the sensor to extend and contract the pistons, I get this oscillating movement. And this is actually to be expected, because when the bar is in front of the sensor, it tells the pistons to rotate, and then it rotates the bar away from the sensor. And then the sensor stops telling the pistons to move since the bar is out of the way of the sensor, which rotates it back in the way of the sensor and creates this oscillating loop. So that wasn't exactly what I was going for. So I needed two solutions for this, and the first one is deleting two of the beams and replacing them with shorter beams. And this won't get detected by that sensor. And the next thing I needed is some sort of toggling mechanism. Now the reason for this is I don't want the sensor to tell the pistons to extend and contract when there's something in front of it. I want it to toggle on and off the pistons when it sees something in front of it. And to do that, I'm going to be using these logic gates. Now the hope was I could use some sort of NAND gate SR latch, which was really just a fancy way to make a toggle latch, until I ended up just realizing it's literally in the game, I don't need to make it. So after making a double AND gate with two inputs just being the sensor, and then putting it in toggle mode. Now, whenever the sensor sees something, it'll toggle on and off that logic gate, which creates the movement I want. And I wasn't actually expecting this to work, so when it did, I was a little surprised, but work was sort of a relative term. It was rotating it on its own. I wasn't touching anything on my keyboard here, but I mean, it's the movement is terrible. It goes fast and then it slows down, and half the pistons aren't even doing anything since they aren't influenced by that key press. So to fix that, it was time to add in a second sensor, and this one's a block closer into the rotational point, meaning it'll be able to pick up those small blocks as well as the large ones. And now you can see how this sensor, on every quarter of a rotation, turns on and off, while that other sensor, only every 180 degrees, turns on and off. So I ended up doing an interesting thing here, where I have this other logic gate, and if I use an XOR gate between those two sensors, that means only when the small block is in front of the other sensor, it'll turn on some of the pistons, and of course I'll need toggle mode for this one as well. Now it's a little confusing, and it was confusing to me as well, but it ended up working, so I wasn't going to mess with it too much. And you can see how this rotation is much cleaner, it's not picking up and slowing down. It is a little bit, but it's definitely more regular, and this is the sort of thing I think would probably be able to start driving the wheels. So now I'm just making some sort of gear train to basically just carry the crankshaft's rotation directly to the wheels. So I start off with one gear at the bottom that engaged with the differential, and I need some way to attach the gear to the crankshaft, and it ends up being pretty easy actually. I just need to use a few bracing pieces. And you can see how the gear rotates with the crankshaft. And finally, I just need one more gear in place to attach these two gears together, or to make these two gears engage with each other. So let's put that in here. And now if I try to give it a shot, it immediately stalls. And I guess I was kind of expecting this, because to drive those wheels it takes quite a lot of torque, and the crankshaft isn't really generating all that much torque, the pistons just aren't that strong. So if I raise the wheels off the ground, it barely has the power to even turn them then. And you can see now how, just how fast they're rotating. And this would be good, but unfortunately the pistons just do not have the power to be able to sustain the speed. So to fix that, I'm going to need some sort of gear reduction system. So before I got into that, I changed out these wood logs into just wooden poles, which are lighter and also they're smaller so I can get more precise timings. And now it's time to try to get in that gear reduction. And I didn't quite know how I wanted to do this, so I started out just by replacing the large gear on the output with a smaller gear, and it rotates the exact same way as before. So with that working, it was time to add in the large gear. And by large gear, I mean the normal gear that happens to be larger than that one. So now you can see how they mesh and that large gear rotates. But it's actually rotating at a slower speed. And if I put another gear on the other side, a smaller gear, and then lock them together, you can see that that smaller gear on the output is now rotating at half the speed of the crankshaft. And it's half the speed, but I get twice the torque on it. Which means I should be able to rotate the wheels with something like this. So I was hoping that this would be enough of a reduction to start driving the wheels. So with that, I just need to create a gear train going all the way to the output. So I have that in place here, and I'm putting in the final gear. And this one had to be a little bit bigger since it was kind of combining two gears that were a little awkward. 
And after I did that, I tried to give it a quick test, and it's in the air at the moment, so you can see it's rotating at half the speed as it was before. And this is all working out so far, I mean everything's rotating, and I was hoping this would be enough to start getting it to move on the ground. So I decided to delete those two wooden poles I had supporting the back wheels, and it just didn't quite have enough power. It was definitely closer than it was before, the pistons were pushing and it was trying, but it just didn't quite get there, even if I tried to turn it over manually using the dragging tool. So unfortunately that wasn't working, but I still had a few ways to go about this, and that's just basically adding in more reductions. So I moved the engine up quite a bit in the air, so I had room to put in a bunch more of these reductions, and now putting a lot of gears going down. It was time to add in the first one here, and it's the same as before, and now I'm adding in a second one, and the third one, and the fourth one, and that's actually all I got for now. So these reductions stack, which means if each one is a 2 to 1 reduction, at the end I'm going to have a 16 to 1 reduction, which means for every 16 rotations of the crankshaft, I'll get one rotation of the differential. So finally I'm getting that last gear put in, and now if I try to run it, it's rotating very slowly, but it has a ton of torque, and now it's having a new problem, which is it's skipping on the other gear and falling out of place. So this was a problem with a lot of the gears, and I had a few different solutions to solve this. And the first one was something pretty simple, and it's just to support the other side of the gear using a swivel joint. So I have that in here, and now I'm putting in the swivel joint, and that supports the other side of the gear and makes it much less likely to sort of bend out of the way, and it makes it easier for the gears to engage. But of course, after I solved that, another gear started skipping, and it was this gear right here. So to solve this one, I ended up just making it a little bit bigger, and it meshes better with the other gear. So after putting that in place, things were working pretty well, but I wanted to try one more thing, which is increasing the power output of the engine directly. And to do that, I can just add more pistons into the engine. So right now I only have one, but I have room to put in a second piston for each of these sections, so might as well just do it. So it's pretty easy to do that. I just have to copy them, move them over to the side, and remember to rebrace them like I am here. Now if I try to run the engine, you can see the movement actually is identical to the way it was before, but it should in theory have twice the power. And I was actually so interested in making sure this was going to work, I didn't even realize the car started moving for the first time. Now it's very slow because of all the gear reductions, but it finally has the power to move. I wanted to try to get even more power, and I tried doubling the pistons once again by adding some on top, but for some reason this engine was much more jittery. You can see here the movement's much more like labored, and now when I attach it, it sort of stalls very easily. I didn't quite know why it was doing this, but I guess I didn't really need to solve it. I tried cranking it over manually here, and it wasn't working. Again, I didn't really need to solve this, it would have just been nice to have double the power. So I ended up just going back to what I had before, and now I'm going 16 times speed, so you guys don't have to sit here and watch this car move super slowly. And it still works pretty well, I mean the wheels being very thin still has some problems, I could make them bigger, but it's kind of funny, so I left it. And it was working until I got under this arch, and I tried turning a bit too sharply, and ended up snapping one of the wood beams attached to the gears. So after strengthening that up, now I'm trying to move, and I'm going to try to climb this little rock here. But the moment I do, everything just sort of stops, and then the engine stalls. So it's not the most powerful engine, it's definitely not the best engine, but I, I guess you could say in a way it's working, and that's really all I wanted to do. So guys, thanks for watching. This took forever to get working, and I'm glad it got working as well as it did. All the gear reductions, I wish I didn't have to have them, because I wish this thing could go quickly, but I think with the weight of the differential I have and using all the wood beams, it just takes an immense amount of power to get this thing to move. So, I'm glad it ended up working at all. So, I just wanted to mention also, I have a Discord server if you want to join it. I'm going to be doing some challenges and some tournaments within Besiege and maybe some other games. So, you can hop in if you want to do that, I have a link in the description below. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. And until next time.